Thanks for watching how to build a motorcycle frame part two. You can find part one at our YouTube channel or at customchoppersguide.com. In part two, we're going to discuss frame geometry, stretching the frame, and rake and trail. I think you'll find the information in this video very helpful, especially if you're just starting out. But I want to also warn you that uh, I'm not a professional speaker. I'm going to be reading from material we created here at customchoppersguide.com, but uh, I think you'll find it uh, more than interesting and helpful. And uh, actually, please let me know what you think. Frame geometry. In all cruisers, the foot pegs and shifter are located a long way forward so your legs can stretch out. On a well-designed bike, this is a comfortable riding position. Cruisers make good touring bikes because of this feature, combined with their stability at high speeds. A badly designed cruiser drops all your weight onto your tailbone and is a far from comfortable ride. The placement and shape of the handlebars stretch the arms out and add to the laid back style. Choppers are an extreme stripped down variation of the cruiser with larger front fork rake and sometimes banana seats for the old school ones. And uh, more often than not, choppers carry a V-twin engine, usually a big one, but not always, of course. There's so many different types out there now. The frame geometry is how this look and style is achieved, the chopper style. Here is a chopper frame diagram. Different chopper looks are achieved by changing the length of parts of a standard frame. It's what's known as stretching. Extend the down tube, for example, and you can get a more obtuse angle for the forks and a longer overall bike. The front wheel moves further away from the frame. It's done for looks, for a better fit for a particular rider, or to change the way the bike handles. It isn't done by just welding an extra few inches into the frame where you want to stretch it. But it, it is done at the time of building the frame, with all the angles and lengths carefully worked out. To understand this section easily, I suggest getting some paper and a pen and doing some drawing of your own. Stretching takes place in three main areas in the rear by extending the wishbones and bottom rails, by extending them up by the neck, and by extending the top tube and the down tubes to shift the angle of the neck. Here this diagram shows where I mean. In this next image, this is what happens when you make a rear stretch. The axle has effectively moved up lowering the bike. Next is a stretch in the front end. In this case, a combination of two of the stretches I mentioned earlier. In this case, the effect has been to lengthen the bike without altering the rake. If just the bottom tube had been extended, then the rake would have grown. And we're gonna discuss um, more on rake in a moment. So with your pen and paper, you can draw entire bikes to see what happens to the frame and the rest of the angle of the ride and forks, the height of the ride from the ground, and so on. To understand the change in handling characteristics that result from stretching the frame, we need to look at rake and trail. Rake is simply the angle formed by a line through the neck stem with a vertical line drawn to the ground when the bike is standing. It looks just like this. As you know, choppers have a larger rake angle than most other motorcycles. A zero rake is when the, uh, the neck points straight at the ground and you never see it in a motorcycle. You would have something impossible to handle. For example, a clown's unicycle and a shopping cart both have zero rake. Generally speaking, the machines with larger rakes will be great for stability in going in a straight line, but less well for tight maneuvers than those bikes with smaller rakes. This is simply because increasing the rake moves the front wheel further away from the rest of the bike, increasing the overall length and therefore the turning circle. So a large rake usually means the bike is good for cruising on the highway. A sport bike may have a rake of 24 inches, a cruiser 32 inches, with 10 to 15 inches difference in their wheelbase dimensions. Each is designed for a different purpose. Trail is a relationship between the front wheel axis and the steering axis measured as shown in this diagram here next. 
Most bikes have a trail between two and four and a half inches. It can be altered by changing the neck rake, the fork length and type, triple trees, and the wheel diameter. This is not a, a hard and fast cutoff point, and good bikes can be built with trails either side of the normal range, including a zero trail. If we go much larger than five inches or so, we would get a bike that's usually stable at speed, probably handing, handling sluggishly, and which at low speed is going to be difficult to keep in line. It is possible to end up with negative trail, where the wheel axis is behind the steering axis. If you use some kind of extension at the bottom of the neck to force out the forks without doing any frame alterations, triple trees that do this are available. Everyone agrees that this is dangerous, however, since the machine may handle in unpredictable ways at speed and on corners, which is never a good idea. So out of interest, it looks like this. And that is basically it for part one and part two of our video series on how to build a motorcycle frame. For more specific, detailed, and technicals, go to customchoppersguide.com. Uh, we also have a free mini course on how to build a frame, how to build a motorcycle, a chopper-style motorcycle. And we also have guides and DVDs available. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. And we will put more videos out just like this. Thank you from customchoppersguide.com.